All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over how I create landing pages for my Google Ads campaigns and how I make them convert at 15% plus conversion rate fairly regularly. So this is one of the most important yet most overlooked aspects when it comes to running a successful Google Ads campaign. The ads job is actually not to make the sale. It's just to get the potential customer's attention and get them to actually click. The landing page is what sells the product or service. So in this video, I'm gonna cover how landing pages work and the principles I use to make landing pages that get around a 15% conversion rate consistently, which is definitely on the high end for Google Ads. So first of all, what is a landing page? So a landing page is simply the page that users land on when they click your ad, thus the name landing page. So these pages can be normal pages on your website that you can access through the menu, like product pages, services pages, whatever or they can be specific pages that you made specifically to run the ads to that you, you don't link to anywhere else, just on the ads. How you do this is totally up to you and will depend on what else you are doing and how you've structured your website. So it's, it's up to you how you're running your marketing campaign basically. Now, here's why you absolutely need a landing page to run Google ads. So it's very important to understand that the job of the ad itself is not to do the selling. With Google ads particularly, they're just too short and they don't give the person enough information to make a proper buying decision. The ad is simply there to get the person's attention, to click on it and find out more about what you're actually offering. So this distinction is very important because a lot of people use the ads to do the selling and think that's what's gonna do it, but it isn't. And then once you structure it this way, the whole way you make your campaign changes. But this is also why it's very important to have a good landing page. The job of the landing page, once the person has actually clicked the ad, is to then take that person who showed a bit of interest because they clicked the ad and sell them on why what you are offering is their best choice. So if you don't have a landing page, what's going to happen is that the person's not gonna find exactly what they were looking for. And as a result, most people will just leave and a few others might look around your website to try and find what they're looking for, but if they don't find it quickly, they're gonna to leave too. So this is why I won't even run ads without specific landing pages for them. You're just leaving too much up to chance and 99% of the time, it's just not going to work out well. Now, there are actually a number of important elements that go into creating a good landing page, which is what I'm going to cover in this video. Hey guys, real quick, if you run a service company and you'd like to add at least $100,000 to $300,000 per year in new business guaranteed or you don't pay, just hit the link below to book a call with us and we'll show you exactly how we'll do that for you. Back to the video. So the key principles of making a good landing page. So first of all is search intent. Now I made a previous video on search intent, which I'm going to link to below this one. So if you haven't watched that, go and watch that after this one as well. It's got some very important information on search intent and how you need to target this correctly. But basically the first thing you need to be clear on is what exactly the person is actually searching for. This is known as the search intent and every keyword has its own search intent. The landing page has to address this search intent. Otherwise people will leave because they didn't find what they were looking for. An example of this would be someone searching for power of attorney. They could either be trying to find out what a power of attorney is or they could be looking for a lawyer who can make them a power of attorney. Now, it's important to realize that there's actually a massive difference between these two search intents and so and what the two people searching for these things are looking for. So you need to make sure that you're addressing the correct one and giving them the information that they actually want. So here's a table that will help to drill this point home. So let's say for instance, the user search keyword is Lake Como Hotels. The ad copy, should say something along the lines of book Lake Como hotels for your next vacation. And then the landing page needs to be on the same topic saying discover the best hotels in Lake Como for unforgettable vacations. Obviously that's a creative way to get their attention, but that's exactly the kind of thing you want. So another example is cheap flights, Australia, the ad copy should be saying get discounted flights to Australia this summer. I would recommend using the keyword specifically. So cheap flights, Australia, but this is just an example on topic. And then the landing page should be taking them to, you know, the best deals on cheap flights in Australia. Same thing here, iPhone Repair London. The ad should say, get your iPhone repaired by the, you know, iPhone experts in London. And then the landing page should also be about iPhone repairs in London. 
So that's the first thing that you need to make sure is you get this search intent correct. Now, the second thing is it needs to be visually matching. So does the landing page actually look like what you are selling? Does the customer know that the second they land on your page, they're in the right place? The best example I can give you of what not to do is a website that I once came across for an automotive service. And I think it was an auto repair shop. I don't quite remember 100%. But basically, it had a big banner at the top with you know behind the headline with the headline in front of it, which is pretty common for most websites and works pretty well. However, the problem with this was the image behind the headline was a mountain and a lake, and it had absolutely nothing to do with auto repair. So what happened is when I landed on this page, I actually thought I was on the wrong website and that maybe the, uh, the link was wrong. And I was just about to leave the website when I noticed that the headline actually did mention auto repair. But this is exactly what you don't want to happen. Because imagine how many customers they're losing because they land on this page, think it's the wrong one because of the wrong image, and then they just leave immediately without even reading. And that's what most people do. So you have to really make sure that the page looks like what you are selling. And it's a similar principle with the, your storefront like in, in person. You don't want your hair salon to look like an auto repair shop. Otherwise, nobody who wants a hair salon is going to come in. So exactly the same principle goes for the website. Now, the next key principle is you want only one goal or one call to action on each of these landing pages. So a common mistake that people make is that they make their landing pages way too complicated and actually just confuse the user. So an example of this is having several things that you want the person to do on that page. So for example, calculators, buttons to other pages, videos that link off to YouTube where they can leave your website, several different forms, a booking calendar, call buttons, newsletter signups, and more. And I've seen all of this on, on one page previously. So what happens in a case like this is that the user doesn't have any idea what you actually want them to do. And as a result, it's just too overwhelming. There's too many things going on. They don't know what's happening and they just leave the website. Now, an inverse example of this is not having any call to action on the page whatsoever. So we've all seen these pages that have just like the headline, some content, and then it just abruptly ends. And there's like no no buttons to call them, no form. They don't say contact us today, nothing like that. And there's just nothing at the bottom. That's the perfect way to also get the person to leave. What you want to do is to make sure you have one main objective with each of your landing pages, also known as the call to action or CTA, and make it clear that you want them to do that one thing. If that means you want them to, to fill out a form and that's the call to action, make the form the most obvious thing on the page so that it stands out and they cannot miss it and tell them to fill it out. That's actually another key component that most people miss as well. You need to tell the user exactly what action you want them to take. Otherwise, they're not going to take it because they're not going to know what you want them to do. Another key point here is that you also want to make the color of the call to action only the call to action. You don't want to have that same color used for anything else. So for instance, if you have a button to call you and it's a red button, you don't want to make any other buttons red because you need to make a clear distinction between the button that you want them to press and other things, like side features, links to other pages, whatever, that are not as important and basically you don't want them to do. If you make them all the same or you make the other ones stand out more, they're going to miss this one or not know which one you actually want them to click. And as a result, they'll get lost on your website, go to other pages, and, and now you've lost them. So um, also make sure that the color of the CTA actually stands out and it's immediately obvious. So if it's the same color as the background or it doesn't stand out much, like it's just like a, a border and it's not actually colored, there's no contrast, or it's a color that's hard to notice, people are literally not going to see it. And as a result, they're not going to do what you want them to do. So it needs to be big and bold. Now, the next point is to give them all the information they need to make a buying decision on that one page. So once you've established the search intent and the action that you want them to take, you need to give them all the information that they're going to need to make the decision to make the action, whether that's purchase the item or contact you for your service or whatever. And it needs to be all on that one page. Assume that people are not going to see any other page on your website because 99% of them are not going to go look around. People will not look around your website. They're just going to leave. And so as a result, you're going to lose a huge chunk of people if you don't give them everything on that one page. Now, information doesn't only mean about the product or service. It can also mean 
information about you as a business. So why should they buy from you? Where are you located? And any other questions that they can possibly ask, if you've ever had customers ask you any questions or things like that, put them on the page because you wanna use these questions and answer them as a way to help the person make the decision to buy from you. So all these bits of information can mean details about the product or service, why what you're selling is better than other options in the market, how your product or service solves their problem, what exactly they are getting in as much relevant detail as possible. And that's a key factor there as well. Why they should buy from you. And you can use testimonials and reviews to do that one. Where you're located or what area that you service or you ship to so that they know for sure that they can actually buy from you. Because if there's any doubt whether you, they serve, whether you service their area or not, they're actually not going to buy from you. So you have to be really careful about that as well. And any other question that a customer has ever asked you as well, you should put it on that page and answer it so that because if one person has asked, at least 10 other people are probably thinking it. So you may as well deal with that now and just get it out the way and make sure that you don't leave any doubt or any question in their mind. Otherwise, you will lose a sale. Now, remove as many distractions as possible. So this one kind of ties back into what I was saying earlier about having only one call to action. Uh, most people love to throw absolutely everything they can at the user and hope that the user is going to figure out what they actually are trying to find and convince them to buy from them. However, the problem is the more distractions you actually give someone, the less likely they are to do what you want. And they're also very likely to get overwhelmed and just not do anything. So by distractions, I literally mean anything other than the main call to action. So that can include videos, though they can be positive. But if they link off to YouTube, then what's going to happen is people will get the recommended videos after they watch the video and then they might click that, go off to YouTube and you never see them again. So if you're going to do videos, I'll recommend hosting them somewhere that doesn't have other like recommended videos and links to a different website, for example, Wistia or something like that. Now, another thing would be buttons to other pages. You want to remove as many of those as possible or make them, unless they serve a specific purpose, um, either remove them or make them far less prominent so that they don't stand out too much. And things like newsletter signups as well, which I've seen can look very confusing on websites. They actually look like a form and you don't realize they're a newsletter sign up until you actually read it, which most people don't do. So you want to be really, really careful with what distractions you have in the page and get rid of as many as you can and leave only the absolute essentials that are going to get the customer to the end goal you want them, which is either contacting you or buying from you. So now that we've gone all over this, what does this all actually look like? So here is an example and the anatomy of an actual landing page. And this is the format that I use when I put landing pages together. And I'm going to go over each part here and then I'm going to give you the whole format as one, one big thing so you can see what it would look like. So this is the basic structure I use when I make landing pages for Google Ads. Primarily when I do this, it's for service-based businesses. However, this same format does work as sales pages for products and other things as well, such as coaching programs and memberships and things. This is a pretty standard format that I've tweaked a bit that comes from like old copywriting letters, like sales letters, because that format's just been working for decades and it works really, really well. And I'll explain why. So first of all, you want to have the main headline at the top. So I always start with the big headline at the top that tells them exactly what the page is about. And it ideally contains the exact same keyword that they searched that was in your ad as well, because that's going to help grab their attention and leave no doubt in their mind that they're in the right place by seeing that keyword. You can also have a sub headline either above or below the main headline to complement it if you need it. Like sometimes I get creative and like maybe have a question as the sub headline and then the main headline answers that and includes the keywords and is relevant. So you could do something like that as well. Now, the second part is content and sales copy that goes below the headline. So this is where I put the sales copy. So the copy should be specifically written to address the search intent and sell people on buying your product or service. So it needs to be easy to read, which means using simple language, explaining the benefits clearly of buying your product or service and using short paragraphs of two to three lines maximum with rare exceptions in some cases. This content can be as short or as long as it needs to be in order to cover all the points you need to to sell the product or service. It just needs to do it well. Now, here's an extra tip. Make sure to include the call to action throughout the copy, even if it's just a button that takes them down to the form. Like, let's say you have the form at the bottom of the page. You want to include a button that scrolls down if they click it because you don't want them to hunt around 
to find the call to action because some people will only need to read a little bit and they're convinced enough and they'll click the button and then go down. Other people will want to look through the whole page before they do it. So you want to just address all of these people and account for all of them so that they can just click it and they don't have to go looking around. So just give it to them straight away. Now, after the content, I like to put the social proof or trust. So what I mean by this is like reviews or testimonials or anything that will build trust and make you look more credible. So with the content, you've told them what it is you're offering and explain why they should buy it from you. Now you want to give them proof and build the trust so that they see what you're saying is actually true. So this means reviews and testimonials, whether they are of the product or service or whether they're of you as a business or ideally both. So for instance, let's say you're selling an e-commerce product. You ideally would want to have reviews of how good the product is and how good you as a seller are as well. And same thing for the service. Um, although the service is kind of combined typically. Now, the stronger you can make these, the better. Now, what I mean by that is instead of just having text in a name, like a lot of people do, where they just write the testimonial on their website, you want to have something like a Google reviews feed or screenshots of Facebook reviews, or even better is actual videos from satisfied customers because anyone can just write a testimonial on their website, but it's far harder to get like Google reviews or Facebook reviews. And certainly if you have a, you know, a shit ton of them, then putting them all on your website is going to make it far more realistic that these are actually real and it's going to do a much better job convincing people. And then video is obviously the most convincing because you actually had to get someone on video to talk. And so like if you have, you know, 10, 15, 20 customer reviews all on video, then that's obviously a very solid convincing point. So now after that, I like to put in any other relevant information uh, that you want to give them, they'll need to know. So like maybe you could have a frequently asked questions or anything like that. Typically for service businesses, I'll have a map in this section here. So I'll have like, you know, we service this area or here is where we're located if people go to them. And so that just tells people exactly like where they are and covers that, you know, addresses the issue of do they service their area or are they close to them so they can go to them. And then finally at the bottom of the page, you have the call to action. So whether that's the form or a contact us button or a purchase checkout, Whatever it is, you want to make sure that it's big and as bold as possible so that people cannot miss it. And I like to put this right at the bottom of the page because it means that when people have gotten to this point, they've typically gone through the whole page, which means they've at least skimmed over the content if they haven't read it. They've seen all like what you say, what the benefits are, the proof, the testimonials and things like that. And so they'll already be pre-sold on buying the product from you if they can't already just check out on the, on the website they'll be pre-sold on working with you as they contact you because of all of these things that you've given them up until now. So this is also why I recommend putting the buttons throughout the page so they can click and just come straight down to this once they are sold enough so that the people who are sold enough can just come straight through and the people who want to read it all can read it all and you're accounting for everyone. So basically anybody who's made it up to the, that point at the bottom of the page will have read enough of the page to be sold on buying your product or service. And that's exactly what you want. So. Here's what this whole page looks like. I'm just going to quickly skim over this. You can get access to this. Um, I'll put a link below this video. So if you want to get access to this and have this, you can have it so that you can use this template for your website. Okay. Now the one other point I want to make is you need to make sure that you're optimizing your landing pages for mobile users. So a lot of people still overlook this, but the problem is that more than 50% of web traffic is actually now mobile. So what that means is the majority of your potential customers are using a mobile device. So with that being the case, you need to make sure that the landing page not only looks good on mobile, but it actually works as it should. It, everything is working. You know, the form is not like half off the page or anything. It's all actually on the page. They can actually fill in the form or the features work. They can actually read the text. It's not too small or anything like that, or like bunched up in like one big block, things like that. You need to make sure that it looks good, it's functional, and it's actually working. So to optimize landing pages for mobile users, a couple of things to keep in mind is obviously make sure all the content is mobile friendly, optimize the page load time, and you want to make it even faster on mobile than you do on desktop, because most people are on mobile data. And as a result, it's going to take longer for it to load. So if you can bring that down even more, that's even better. You want to create simplified mobile forms so that you don't put people off by having to like type in lots of things on the mobile. Ideally, if you can just have like, you know, two or three fields, something like that, that's very simple for them to fill out, that would be ideal. It's going to help to increase your conversion rate. 
And you also want to test multiple mobile landing pages to see which ones actually work better. And that's going to help you get an even higher conversion rate. So in conclusion, these are all the things that I, I follow when I make landing pages. And if you are running Google ads, in my opinion, you must be making landing pages. A well-made landing page is going to get you way more conversions and significantly increase your ROI and lower your advertising cost. So the format that I've shown you here makes a very simple but highly effective landing page, which gives the user everything they need to make a decision whether they're going to buy from you or not. And it makes it super easy to navigate as well as looking pretty good. I cannot stress enough how important it is to make a good landing page for your Google Ads campaign. And quite frankly, if you don't make them, I would rather just not even run the Google Ads at all. Don't run them to the home page like most people do. It's just not going to work. Just make the landing page. Trust me, it's going to be a much better result for you. Just, just do it. All right, catch you guys on the next one.